I'm Tom Long, and today we're going to look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Jesus heals a crippled woman on the Sabbath. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Thus ends the reading of God's word. Now, there are a number of questions that come up when I consider the words in this story. First of all, when and where did Jesus heal the crippled woman? We see that in verse 10. The day was the Sabbath day, which for uh, the Hebrews was the seventh day of the week, patterned after uh, the creation account and uh, the Ten Commandments. So the Sabbath was Saturday, basically. And where was Jesus? He was in a synagogue. Now, now the word synagogue means a gathering together, an assembly, an assemblage of people. And it's very much like our word for uh, church, uh, which, like synagogue, has come to, to often be a shorthand reference to the building in which the people congregate. But it actually is referring, the word actually refers to uh, the people who have congregated, the congregation, if you will, not the, not the structure itself. But in this case, I think he probably is using it in the, uh, Luke is probably using this word in the shorthand reference to, he's in the location where the Jews would gather together, women on one side, men on the other, on Saturdays, and they would gather to hear um, exhortations from the Bible and for prayer. And so that's what they were doing. And it, they did this on Saturdays, on the Sabbath day, when they were not supposed to be working. So that day was set aside for the purpose of worship. And this woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. Um, and what was wrong with her? Well, she had some kind of uh, spinal issue that kept her bent over and she wasn't able to straighten up. What's interesting here is uh, there's a couple of things that are kind of cool. Like if you wonder, what did Jesus do to heal the woman? You know, did he uh, uh, give her a shot of cortisone in the spine or what did he do? He did two things that we're told about. He spoke to her. He said, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And the fact that his words had this kind of power reflects back on the creation story where God, the creator says, you know, let there be day, let there be night, let there be an ocean, let there be, you know, all he had to do was say, let there be, and creation happened. So that was the first creation. And now all Jesus has to do is say, woman, you are set free, and it happens. But he, he's not just setting her free from this infirmity. 
He's setting her free from the stigma of the infirmity, the limitations of the infirmity, and perhaps the psychological injury that that infirmity had inflicted upon her. And we're told that the other thing that Jesus did, besides speak words, speak those powerful, recreating, healing words, the other thing that he did was he put his hands on her. Now, there are some things that are just very special in life. Um, when your loved one brushes their hand against your cheek or rubs the back of your neck, there's just a way in which that communicates love that is so special. Maybe it goes back to that wonderful feeling of being stroked by your mother when you were in her arms as a child. But that touch, that touch is so important. That acceptance, that connection, that literal physical connection. And Jesus not only spoke healing, but he touched her. He connected with her in this very intimate way. In a setting where men are on one side, women are on the other. Jesus sets her free and lays his hands upon her. And what happens when he does that? Well, two things again. Immediately she straightened up. The healing is successful. She straightens up. But the other thing is she praised God. When God intervenes to recreate us, to set us free from the things that bind us, the response that God is looking for is gratitude, praise, and worship. And that's what this woman does. Now, I, I kind of wish that the story just stopped right there. But it doesn't, does it? Because it jumps right into what's going on with the synagogue ruler and his cohorts. Because what happened there was lifting Jesus up to a level above their status as the rulers of the synagogue. And so the head guy, the leader of the synagogue, says to the people in that grumpy, cantankerous, combative, snarky voice, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. So sad. He should have been rejoicing with this woman. He should have been hugging her. They should have been dancing and shouting and making music and hoopla. And he comes out with, come and be healed on the other days. You did it on the wrong day, lady. Well, Jesus was having none of that. So Jesus says, you hypocrites. Now that word, he's addressing them as hypocrites. And that word is kind of interesting because a hypocrite is uh, the Greek word for an actor who wears a mask. And so you've got a mask that looks one way, that presents to the outside world that you're one thing. But behind the mask, you're something completely different. You hypocrites, Jesus says. Don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Now, why do they do that? They've got all these minute rules about not working on the Sabbath. Why can they take care of their livestock? That's their livelihood. That's where their living comes from. That's how they survive. That's how they make money. They got no problem with that. So what's really the issue? We have to wonder, what's really the issue? Jesus is taking their little system, their little code that they've added onto the law, and he's challenging that order. So he continues, Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day? From what bounder? 
oh, you guys are willing to set a donkey loose so that it can get some water, you'll untie it. But if I untie some, a woman who's been bound so that she can drink of the water of life, oh, now you're upset. What is wrong with you? How hypocritical. And when he said this, all his opponents were what? They were humiliated. When the kingdom of God breaks into the world, the world is going to respond with indignation. But we can rest assured that ultimately, when this, before the story is over, all of those who are indignant at the inbreaking of God's kingdom will be humiliated. They will be shown for who they are behind the mask. And finally, how did the people respond to the combination of Jesus healing the woman and putting the system, the structure, the traditions in their place relative to the authority and mercy of God? How did they respond? They were delighted at the, the things that Jesus was doing. And, and to them, those things are described as wonderful. When the kingdom of God breaks in, when God recreates us, when he sets us free, it's something to give praise for, something to delight in. It is something wonderful. I hope that between now and the next time we get together, God in his grace will do something wonderful in your life and you will delight in it and you will give him praise. And I would like that if that happened for me as well. Thank you for joining me this morning. God bless you. We'll talk again soon. A long time ago, there was a man who laid down his life on the line. He claimed he could make the lame walk again and give back sight to the blind. Now some people love him and some people wanted to take him and put him away. Well, I wasn't there to see what he did but if he were right here today, I would crawl all the way to the river. I would crawl all the way to the sea just to watch him walk on the water and lay his loving hands on me.